You are welcome to today's message. I don't know where you have viewed this message from, but I want you to know that God is with you right there, and is here and over there at the same time. Today is a continuation of our message on revelation knowledge. Today's theme is the glorious day. It's ahead of the church of God. The glorious day is ahead of us. And the judgment day is ahead of this world. The judgment day is ahead of this world. It's going to be so powerful. I want you to tag your friend and after this message, you make a wash party. I will make this statement, then we pray. This is the statement. It is not so important to be serious as is to be serious about important things, the eternal thing, the souls of men and women, very important. I will read it again. It is not so important to be serious as is to be serious about important things, eternal thing, the souls of men and women. Have not said that? Let us go to the presence of God in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for another day, this hour, to bring your precious word to your precious people. The Bible says the entrance of the word of God gives light. The light of the gospel, which is the power of God, is permeating this social platform right now into homes, family, and life. I thank you, Jesus, because the power of Satan has been defeated. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You are welcome to this broadcast called The Revelation Knowledge, The Glorious Day Ahead of the Church. If you are part of the church, you are born again. The Glorious Day is ahead of of you and I. And the judgment day is ahead of this world. Now what is glorious? When says something is glorious, by definition, it means notable or distinction or prestige. It's a notable day. It's ahead of you. If you are born again, very important. It is the word of God that said that in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 27. Ephesians 5, 27 says that he might present it to himself a glorious church. In other words, a church that is notable, hardly outstanding, not having spots or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy. And without blemish. Ephesians 5.27 What makes church holy? Without wrinkle? What is that? It's because of the blood of Jesus. In First Peter chapter 1 verse 19 He says you have been saved and washed by the precious blood of Jesus. That is the blood that makes us holy. It makes us faultless. It clean up up. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, it says, It wash us, it makes us kings and priests. And where the word of kings is, there is power. And the duty of priests is to intercede on behalf of the dying world. If you know you are in Christ, the glorious days ahead. In the midst of chaos that is going on around the world, God sent it to you. You are blood washed. Because you are blood washed now, the Spirit of God dwells in you. You can't find that in Old Testament, in New Old Covenant. The Spirit of God is not dwelling in them. It comes and it goes. But in this era, the Spirit of God dwells in you. You are so precious in the hand of God. 
the Bible says you are now a divinity carrier. No matter what is going on around you, you are a divinity carrier. You carry the power of God in your being. That is Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. You carry the power of God in you. This message is for you. First John 4, 4. First John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater one is inside of you. The answer the people are looking for is inside of you. And looking left and right, what is going to happen? Bad days are coming for this war. Bad day, the judgment days are ahead, but for the church, the glorious day. John chapter 17, verse 17. John 17, 17. He said, Sanctify them through that truth. Your word is truth. When you read the word of God concerning who you are in Christ, the word sanctification means set apart. People are going through stuff in this world, but God said, I will set you apart. Your body has become the temple of the Holy Spirit. You can't find that in Old Testament, in Old Covenant. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Say so your body has become the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells. In you now, are you hearing me? You are a divinity carrier. Praise God. But but the people of this world, man, say judgment day is coming. Now that's why I, I want to I want to read it again to you. It is not so important to be serious as to be serious about important thing that is eternal things. That is the souls of men and women. I'm reading the letters of Jesus to the church of Laodicea. This is the last letter to the church of Laodicea. That is Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. I will read it to let you know this, the, the source of mankind is serious. That is why God is bringing wealth, a burden into the church into the church. It is time for the people around us to be looking for church for help. Glorious day is here for the church and it's here ahead. Look at Revelation 3, 17, say, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and I have need of nothing and know not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. But it is a I cancel thee to buy of me gold, try and the fire, that thou may be rich and white raiment, thou may be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eyes slave, that thou may see. What does that mean? When you read something like that, you have maybe three views, maybe. That is just for the church religion. In fact, not many preachers teach this revelation. It's pitiful. And don't forget this at the time of the church. Revelation chapter 1, 2, 3 are letters to the church. Seven churches that represent the whole mankind. Represent the church age from Pentecost to rapture. These are the Message for it. It represents all. Now, I don't have view that where well, maybe God don't want us to have money or riches because He said in verse 17. But thou, He said, I'm rich and increasing goods and need nothing. Um, he said, Don't you know that you are rich, miserable, poor, and blind and naked? Maybe God don't want me to have anything. No, no, no. In fact, the Bible said the wealth of the wicked are laid down for the just. We want you to have a border. We want to have a border. See if I go belong to God and it's yours. He said, The heart is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. That is Psalm 24. God is the owner of the universe. John 10 says, I come for you to have to be blessed. You read John 10 10 in Amplified Bible. Beyond. Your capacity. Psalm 23 says, I will pour oil upon you. 
Your car will fill up and run over. God wants us to be blessed. In fact, He wants us to be blessed so we can go out and be a blessing to others. But what God want you, don't want you and I to do, He does not want us to depend or trust our money. He wants us to trust Him. He is the giver of that money. The church in Laodicea, trust that money. They say, we don't need anything. And God said, you, you say that? You are poor, you are rich, you are naked. You have deviated from me. You trust your money. That is what God says you don't do. The glorious day I had for all churches that put their trust in the law, in the means of chaos, in the means of satanic attack, in the means of disease, in the midst of COVID-19, they, they favor, God said, I will favor you in their midst. God said, I will favor you in their midst. In fact, in Isaiah 60, verse 2 says, Say, darkness will cover the whole world, but the glory of God will rise upon you. Hallelujah. We rise. I, say, I want to repeat it again. What is called glory? Glory means not table. Not table. It means distinctions and it means prestige. In the means of this chaos. But you should not trust your riches. Trust the Lord. In fact, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7 says that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perish. Though it be tried with fire, my fun into praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus Christ. He said, don't compromise your faith. Regardless of what you're going through now, do not compromise your faith. You need that faith. It's that faith that will access you to the power of God. Uh, the power of God will cover you. That's what he said in Revelation. That's what he said in Peter. Don't trust in your riches. Money is looking for you now as long as you trust the Lord. The money becomes your servant to bless mankind. In fact, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, listen, 1 Timothy 6, 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some converted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through Many sorrow. The money is not the root, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Spouse kill insurance because of insurance. Children kill their family because of insurance. Most churches compromise. Some churches no Some church compromise because of the, the love of money. The love of money is the root of all issues. But God is the one that gives you all things to enjoy. He gives you, you are the seed of Abraham. He bless you. So you can bless the nation of the world. In fact, in 1 Timothy, I'm going there again. I see somebody blessed now. Say, I am blessed. Three times, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Listen, if you go and trust riches, you don't turn to God. That blessing will come with sorrow. But when you trust God, you want to be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. That flow upon you. Bible says, it says, the favor of God will surround you. Anywhere you turn. That is Psalm 5, verse 12. Because you have been justified. The blood of Jesus has cleansed you. So God sees you as justified. That's why I say, favor will follow you, surround you. Psalm 5, verse 12. But don't trust that money. Trust him. Look at what First Timothy said. Chapter 6, verse 17. First Timothy 6, 17 says, Shall then that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust on certain riches. Riches is not certain, you know. God is your helper. But in the living God, listen to this, in the living God, who gives us all riches, all things to enjoy. He gave you all things to enjoy. You enjoy your spouse, you enjoy your children, you enjoy your property. If you trust God, if you trust God, you know some people are taking this one to another extreme. God don't want us to have it. 
Yes, it do. It do. I'm here to announce the glorious day, the time of blessing is here for you. Blessing without sorrow is here for you, but don't put your trust in that. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 8, I'm going through many verses so you can study yourself. That if you are sick or you are poor or you are down, God sent me to you. Somebody received that now. You are crying for provision to do what God asks you to do. Listen to this message. Somebody who's going to bless you. <laughs> Blessings on your way. But listen, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord, thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get well, that he may establish his covenant. See? He may establish his covenant. We shall swear unto the Father as it is these days. You see, I, I will bless you to be a blessing. That's the covenant of God in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. I will call those who curse you. So God said, they remember me. So I can bless you so I can stand my covenant all over the world. Glory be to God. This, 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 the, the glorious day is ahead of you. If you are born again, you are blush wash, your Holy Ghost fee, you are tongue talker, you are devil chaser. The glory of God is here for you now. You see, all the COVID 19 that is going around is not your portion. Say that with me. They are not your portion. Disease is not your portion. In the redemption, there's healing. In the redemption, there's progress. In the redemption, there's power. It's a redemption. It's waiting for you. But do not Put your trust in them. Put your trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. If you put your trust in riches, like the church of Laodicea, you'll be left. Rapture is coming. Rapture is coming. Listen to me. I want to say this. If you put your trust in this world and its money, that is what is called Demas Syndrome. Demas Syndrome. The word Demas means D-E-M-A-S. Demas he used to be a followers of Paul. He used to be powerful in the thing of God. He used to be heart and passion, heart passion for soul. But Bible says he loved this world and he left to this world. Look at what Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. 2 Timothy 4 10 says, For Demas has forsaken me, having love this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, Sistria, and Galatia. It left me. A man cannot serve two masters. Are you looking for what you are going to eat? That's why you serve? Just looking to be blessed? That's why you come? No, no, no. If you are like that, you're going to be a victim of Antichrist. A man is coming, we call his name Antichrist. The whole world will serve this man. The whole world will serve this man. But listen, it will not be on the throne. You cannot take the throne when the church is here. It can't. It can't. That is why Revelation chapter 1, 2, 3 are for the church. But from Revelation chapter 4 all the way to 21, you cannot see the word church. Why? Because in that time, the church is a rapture. <laughs> Glory be to God. But right now, because the church is here, the Antichrist cannot be on the throne. The spirit of Antichrist all around. Causes demons, causes disease. But Antichrist cannot be on the throne. Now, I will read it. In 2 Thessalonians, Chapter 2, verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, 2, verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Which day? The day of rapture. It will not come. Listen, and the day of the Antichrist will not come. A sign that comes falling away. Falling away does not mean backsliding. It means the partial. In fact, if you read it in, in uh, Amplified Bible, it says, the partial will take place. When you take place, listen, the next one, they say, a son is coming come in funny way, and that man of sin, that Antichrist, will be revealed. 
that day of departure, he will reveal the son of petition who God is going to destroy. That he will reveal there are six characteristics of the Antichrist. And that is why he's going to put mark on people's forehead or hand. Because six, six, six. That's his characteristics. I will explain that in the coming weeks. This characteristic of Antichrist. The whole world will serve him. According to Revelation chapter 13. The whole world. The whole world. Revelation chapter 13 will serve this Antichrist. No exception. No exception. The whole world will serve him. They will worship him. If you read Revelation chapter 13, is there. The whole world will bow down for Antichrist. And that is all. And we put mark on them. Revelation 3, verse 17 and 18. They will put mark on the whole world. They will serve him. But by that time, you are left. Just as the people woke up in second week of March this year, and they have announced that everybody to wear masks because of disease that is in the air. And the day is coming again. People wake up, they say, everybody has to take mark. Bible says you cannot buy, you cannot sell until you take that mark. It's on the way now. But I want to tell you, between now, the mask and the mark of the beast, whoa, they are going to be ah, la, 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 abundant of blessing the church to go out and bring souls. Abundant of harvest. Harvest is on the way. It's, um, Jesus said, I'm coming for a glorious church. The noticeable church. The church will torment devil. Antichrist cannot stay. When the church is here, it cannot stay. Because you are blood washed. Your Holy Ghost feet. You are tongue talker. You command things, it shall come to pass. Oh, hallelujah. It will not, Antichrist will not be here. But of those of you who are not saved, you trust your money. You are not saved. You trust yourself. You are not saved. You trust the government to help you. Antichrist is coming. I will tell you, this is characteristic of Antichrist. And so the whole world will bow down for him. In Revelation chapter 13, the whole world. In verse 8 and 9, the whole world. But by that time, ooh, the rapture is taking place. Are you serious about the souls of men? God said, because of this, I will bless you. You can reach out for them. I will say it again in close. He said, it is not so important to be serious as it is to be serious about the important thing, eternal thing, souls of men. That is why God said the church of this year, they said they don't need God. And Bible says you are blind, you are naked, you are vulnerable. Don't depend on the thing of this world. The thing of this world will find itself to you. Are you sick? Are you down? First you need to do. Give your life to Jesus. Are you saved before? But right now you, you are back. You are going back because of this thing of this world. Come back home. It's going to be tough out there for everyone who don't know the Lord. The mark of the beast is on the way. The mark of the beast is on the way. Come back. Are you listening to me? Are you be tormented by devil? Are you be tormented? <laughs> Turn back to the King of Glory. Let me pray for you. Next time I'll be telling you the six characteristic of the devil. The devil. Why devil hates seven? Devil hates seven. But church, the glorious day is here and it's ahead. You're going to go from glory to glory, from power to power. That is what God says about the church that is coming. Glory be to God. Much more to say, but meet me on Friday. I want to tell you about the characteristics of Antichrist and why Antichrist hates seven. And why you and I are going to join this world. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You're going from glory to glory. Are you down? Are you sick? Are you depressed? First of all, before I pray, I release the anointing of God over you before I do that. I want to invite you. If you are not born again, or you are born again, you are now backslide. Come back home. Say, Lord Jesus, say that with me. Come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. I will say that. 
you are saved. I want to join my faith with your faith. You stretch your hand towards me. There is no distance in the spirit world. I don't know where you have viewed this from. I don't even know the time. But well, those are irrelevant. In the spirit realm, there is no distance. I pray to you and I pray for you. I ban every force of enemy, every harassment, every fear, every bad dream. Yes, I ban it right now. Satan, lose your host. This is the time for the church Kadori, to rise up in glory, to rise up in power, to bring souls to the kingdom. So every harassment of the enemy, in the name of Jesus, your power has been broken. Lose your host now. And go back in the name of Jesus. Everyone is son of my verse who I cover by the blood of Jesus. You are sanctified. The blessing of God is located you now. Say that with me. The blessings of God are located me now. Amen. Woo! Glory be to God forever and ever. God bless you. Don't forget to meet me here on Friday, the same time, the same place. And share this world on your social media. And on Sunday, if you're anywhere in Rodana, <laughs> this Sunday is, is going to be a powerful Sunday. Our church open by 9.30. You come. Come to be revived. Come to be touched by the anointing. Come. You recall and hear the word of faith when you become a recipient of the glory of God for this last day. You come. And anywhere you are hearing this one in the whole world, make sure you find a Bible Believing church where your new creation reality is going to be taught and join that church because Bible say if you are lukewarm, I will speed you out, and that is not your portion. God bless you, and I'll see you again on Friday. Remember, Jesus is Lord, amen and amen.